What's up everyone, my name is Mark Hawk, and today we're going to take an early look at the Xiaomi Yi. It's a Chinese-based action camera that everybody's been kind of talking about because it uses a lot of higher-end parts, but it has a very low-end price. So what we're going to do today is we're actually going to try and hook it up to an app. That way we can change all the settings because you can't change any of the settings on the camera itself. It primarily relies on an app. But the default app that comes with it is in Chinese and it's kind of hard to navigate through and hard to set up at first. But what, what I've done is I found a, a translated app on the Android since the iOS version isn't available till the end of April. So we're going to run through how to install that onto your Android device and just sort of the initial setups with the Wi-Fi, how to troubleshoot some of the problems such as that beeping after you update the firmware and such. So anyway, let's get to it. All right, so the application we're going to use, I kind of got from a site called uh, mega.co.nz. I found out about it through Dashcam Talk forums. Uh, they kind of uh, made me aware that this app was available. So traditionally, you would get the uh, the Xiaomi Mi app, and that is going to control the camera, but that's completely in Japanese. So what I wanted to get was this uh, Yi camera, which is this completely translated version. But the only way I could install this was by getting uh, this mega thing. So the app, I mean, uh, the location, the URL for this will be on the screen right now. Or if it's disappeared, you could also check out the more information section below this video. And I'll try and keep a local file hosted somewhere. That way we always have access to this file. Now the reason why I say go through uh, Cloud Drive, this mega Cloud Drive, is because I don't really know how to install applications uh, natively on an Android device. I'm not an Android user very much, but this made it actually very simple. Uh, all we had to do was sort of uh, download the application, uh, go to the URL through the device, it automatically opened everything up in Mega, I clicked on it, I installed it, and it said um, it said I had to clear it through my settings to allow uh, third-party sort of apps to install, so I went to the settings, changed everything like that, went back to here, and was able to install it with no problem. So after you get installed, you navigate to it, and it's called, again, the Yi camera, so we'll access that. Now we have everything hooked up here right now, and you can see there's a bit of a delay, so I'll just sort of snap. See, there's about a one or two second delay on there. But um, initially, this was kind of hard to get set up. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna turn on the Wi-Fi on your camera, and you're gonna also wanna make sure that you're plugged into power, because if you're below 50% power, it's not gonna let you go through the process. And the way you can quickly tell if you're below 50% process is if the ring light on your camera is purple. Blue is over 50%, purple is below 50%, and red means you're pretty much critically low, somewhere around 25% or less. So anyway, plug it in, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to your Wi-Fi network. Uh, ours is, you're gonna go to your settings. Where is that guy? Just had it here a second ago. You're gonna go to your settings. You're gonna go to your connections, and you're gonna to wanna to find the YDXJ, and then I believe the that number is uh, universal, or not universal, different per camera. So once you see that, you gotta make sure you have the Wi-Fi turned on, so turn on the button on the side. That should pop right up. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna forget this uh, network, okay? And then we've disconnected, so it's telling me through the Yi camera app to reconnect it, but we'll get there in a second. So we'll go back to our settings real quick. And we're gonna put in the, the default password. So here's our camera, because we've turned on the Wi-Fi. And the default password, pretty simple. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Okay, so I'll just show the password here, just so you guys see. We'll press connect, and bam. We're all connected. Everything uh, in your device should remember this. Now we don't have to worry about it. And we'll just go back to the home screen and we'll navigate over to our Yi camera app, and bam. Now, again, right here, it's gonna say reconnect, but you're gonna see it's gonna start with this original orange screen. Uh, it might tell you, well, no, what it's going to do is if this first time you're hooking it up to the app, you're gonna to have to update it via firmware. Now, this is where things can be slightly scary when you're upgrading to version 1.07, and hopefully in future releases, you won't have to do this, but um, you're gonna get a slight error that might lock up your camera after you're done. Now, the steps I took to prevent this and continue using the camera fine, um, I had the camera plugged in when I started the firmware test. Uh, when the firmware was done installing, the camera started beeping like so. So what I did was I immediately tried to turn the Wi-Fi back on since it automatically disconnected from the app. That didn't work. I turned off the camera 
I took out the micro SD card because what some users on Dashcam Talk talked about was removing the SD card, then powering the unit back on, and at that point I was able to turn my Wi-Fi back on. I reconnected the camera with the app, and then at which point I inserted the micro SD card and navigated over to the settings tab on the app itself that's in the upper right here on this orange bar. So when we go to that, uh, the micro SD card is in there. We scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll see the word SD card. Select that, it'll tell you how much card space you have. And we have a 64 gig card in here, which under, is my understanding is the max size we can have. Uh, and then we just did a format uh, SD card and we got all of our space back and we were all good to go. I was able to turn the camera on and off without beeping at that point. And from there, now we have full access to this app. Uh, there's a ton of options here, so we'll just go over a few real quick. So this is my first time looking at a lot of these options as well. I know it's a little hard to see on this screen, but we have like quality, timestamp, resolutions, and stuff like that. Anytime you select one of these, it actually opens up pop-up menu here on the bottom. So right now I'll select quality. Then we get this little pop-up here. High, low, normal. Um, we check uh, timestamp. We have those options. Resolution, we can do uh, 1080p at 60 frames a second. That's a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. But then we also have 30 frames a second. We can do uh, 48 frames per second, which I always find it weird that I do 48p, but I usually do FPS, but it's safe space. Uh, 24p, which is great. 24 frames per second, not usually a standard in action cameras. It, it is now more days, but it's just great to have it. Uh, we have a bunch of resolutions here. We can do 720 at uh, up to 60 frames a second, I don't know, 120 frames a second, uh, or 480 at uh, 240p. Pretty impressive for a $100 camera. We'll have to see how that works out and stuff like that. Uh, we have NTSC and PAL, so you can switch to that if you want to get your PAL uh, frame per seconds and formats. Metering mode. This is actually how it will change contrast and stuff on you. So center is basically, it goes by what's on the center screen. Averages, it takes the whole plate into consideration. And spot is similar to center, except it kind of just takes the center uh, average. So uh, we'll see other than, we have default photo mode. So we have a self timer, time lapse burst, pretty self explanatory. Uh, Timestamp, we can turn that on or off. We definitely want that off. Um, preview. Then we have a few switches up here. Uh, preview auto low light, so it will automatically uh, ramp the frame rate lower. If we go into a darker spot, it'll, so if we have it at 60 frames per second and we're driving, and we go into a tunnel, it'll drop it all the way down to 24, boost up uh, sort of the light coming into the camera. Uh, loop recording, self-explanatory uh, lens. What does that say? Lens rectification. So I believe what that's doing is it's actually removing uh, the lens distortion in the camera itself, which is pretty cool. You don't have to uh, take out the lens distortion later on. Um, huge, huge plus. Auto turn off Wi-Fi, so if the device probably isn't connecting to a Wi-Fi device, it'll turn off. Great battery saver, because this thing will suck the Wi-Fi dry. I had it on just for a little while, and it went from 80 to maybe 30 in less than like 25 minutes. Uh, then you have some like Wi-Fi settings and stuff like that. We can change our password. Oh, we can enter a new password and stuff like that if we don't want the default, which makes total sense. Some cameras will actually lock it, but it makes sense. Speaker volume, LEDs, camera clock, auto power off. Then we have our model, our firmware number, our serial number, SD card, find a camera. That way, you know, if our camera actually gets dropped in the snow, we want to find it, we can press find camera button. It's actually down here, you where I can't see it. So anyway, there's a whole bunch of options on this thing. Now that we actually have the Android app, working and stuff like that. We can actually use the camera. Uh, we can actually test it out. And I just wanted to take you guys through this process with me because this was uh, this was an experience. So anyway, we have a bunch of other options here just to kind of see if I can get some light on it. And as you can see here, we have a, uh, we can check our current battery life on the camera. We have our uh, phone battery life, our connection status. Doesn't seem to be a button. I guess that just means full bars. Uh, we, here's our button to start recording and stop recording. I think we just took a photo. Here we can take a look at all of our uh, gallery of images. <laughs> our gallery of one, our videos, our downloads. I have no idea what downloads would be, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so far this camera is pretty exciting. Uh, these are some of those English translations I kind of showed you guys about earlier. So these little English translations will actually pop up when you're first starting up the app, but you guys have already seen that. And it just makes the whole setup process a lot easier. So 
Anyway, refer to the more information section below this video. I'll do my best to keep it up to date with uh, current links to the files you'll need, current links to the forum discussions for issues you might run into. Again, this is just my first experience with this camera and now we can actually start testing it, so. And if you guys want to pick up a Yi yourself before our quick look is up, you can head on over to GearBest.com. This is actually where I got mine after two failed attempts on eBay. Plus, they're hooking us up with discount codes that you guys can use on either the monopod version or the solo version, either in white or yellow. You can check those out. Uh, it's pretty simple, just add it to your cart, then at checkout, once you're logged in, just add your coupon code, and we'll have up-to-date coupon codes in the more information section below. And like I said, like your best, they got me the camera within three or four days, and they actually got me the camera unlike so many eBay sellers. So you check them out, maybe pre-order the waterproof case, which is coming out later this year for only 20 bucks right now, which is pretty dope. I've already gone ahead and done that. So yeah. Anyway, I'm Mark Hawk, and this has been our sort of first look at the Xiaomi Yi camera. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and be sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you out there. Have a good one, guys.